out here, Dante's Peak, checking out Lake Death Valley. That'll only probably be here for a little bit till the summer hits, but it's a pretty nice view. And uh, I rode the K16B out here today. It took about 130 miles to get here, I want to say. And uh, biked it pretty good for the most part. So it's finally good to get out and get some touring miles on that sucker. But man, just check out the view. Tell you what, there's something else. Hey everybody, welcome to my review of the BMW K1600B. My model is a 23 uh, bike and I got it about 500 miles ago and I just wanted to maybe talk about um, why I bought the bike and what my experience has been so far now that I got about 500 miles on it. Uh, today I am in Amargosa Valley, just north of Las Vegas, about 80 miles. And I put about 160, 180 miles on the bike today so far, went all the way up to Dante's View. I'll drop some pictures and footage in here. Um, beautiful ride for the most part. Um, no big issues at all. Pretty comfortable for the most part. Um, so yeah, um, getting into it. I bought this bike because I wanted to get away from Harley Davidson. I don't hate Harley. I still have one at home. Um, but I was kind of tired of overpaying, uh, especially now that the prices are almost $10,000 more, uh, for a Rogue Glide than what I paid back in 2019, I want to say. Um, so I decided maybe it's time to try something else because a new Rogue Glide right now at the door is going to cost me 34 to 36 ish, maybe 32 if I can find the right dealer. Um, and this bike, uh, you know, before gap insurance was about 28, five, I want to say it was. So not a cheap bike by any means, but when you put it compared to the Harley, it's thousands less and you get a ton more features that you don't get with the Harley stock. And I'm kind of tired of having to go to the dealer, buy a Harley, you ride it home and you absolutely don't like it. The seat needs to get changed, the exhaust needs to get changed, you know, windscreen, you got a laundry list of about five grand worth of stuff right off the bat to even be comfortable on the bike for a long distance ride. So this bike, you know, some of those things that this bike comes with that the Harley doesn't stock, comes with a very comfortable seat and it's heated. Um, at least this model does. You get floorboards, you get the driving lights or the fog lights, whatever you want to call them lights. Um, you get the adaptive headlight that does turn when you're going to the corners. Um, and you do get, you know, pretty much all the features out of the infotainment right up front, including the wireless Bluetooth for your headset module. So the windscreen also on this one goes up and down. The stock one worked pretty good, but I changed it out for a clockworks just because I love clockworks stuff. And, um, you know, I, I, I needed a little bit more protection on the wind. Um, some other notable features about this bike, dual disc brakes. It d and the front does have a center stand. It is a single sided swing arm. Uh, and it does have a direct drive uh, with a drive shaft, meaning no belt, no chain, which I think is pretty cool. Um, that it's instant, you know, you don't have to worry about snapping a chain or snapping a belt out in the field. As long as you just take good care of that drive shaft system and change the oil, you should be all right. Um, as recommended, of course. And this one has locking saddlebags. It'll lock your steering and it'll lock your gas cap with a click of a button because uh, everything on this bike is done just via a key fob. That's it. You can lock, unlock the bike and you even get a spare key if you need it, um, which also will lock your bags too if, if need be. Um, so you get a couple things, you know, you went for the Harley. Um, Riding this bike today on the highway um, was pretty nice, pretty smooth. If I were to say that about this engine, it's very, very buttery, silky smooth. It, it, it's like it's not even there, so which is pretty cool. Um, the floorboard position is actually really good. I, I, I liked it. It's, uh, it was comfortable to kind of stretch my legs as I needed, but the foot pegs are in a very sporty position as well. So that'll help you out, you know, just going between the two. So that's one cool thing is you don't have to buy no pegs or no footboards, you know, um, 
and definitely adds the sportiness of the bike. And I also bought this bike because I wanted something that was sporty, kind of like a sport bike, but I wanted something that could also put down some miles because I don't have a stable full of bikes at home anymore now that I got the kids and everything like that. So now it's pretty much just down to two motorcycles for me, which is my old Softail Fat Bob and, and this bike, which is meant to be my touring machine for getting out and doing some big miles. Um, but also, you know, a good everyday rider if you want as well. So, so far today's ride was great with the bike, happy with it. Um, I want to touch on the infotainment a little bit. That hooks into your phone, uh, which also then you hook that up to your headset as well, all through the dash. So you control everything through it. You can make phone calls. I did test phone calls today. That was great. Uh, I had good audio quality reports. I did test the music extensively today. It worked great. The thumb wheel is a little, you know, cumbersome to get used to. But once you get used to it and you figure it out, you're like, all right, cool. Now you know exactly what to do, how to operate it. Um, the Harleys have a little bit more buttons, so it's a little bit easier to just make a quick track change or, you know, something like that. This one is not too difficult. It's just a couple extra button pushes. You know, it is what it is. Um, I did use the Ride Connected app with it today. I didn't like the Ride Connected app because uh, it wants you to keep your phone on the entire time while it's using it, but it's like that's kind of almost impossible these days. <laughs> So you can load directions in it and it'll give you the directions, you know, turn by turn. Uh, but if you want the full map view and all that, you gotta keep the app open, paired to Wi-Fi, paired to Bluetooth. It's cumbersome, like, come on guys. Like, you guys have been notorious for, you know, always making us buy that little extra navigation. You could have gave it to us for once. And giving it to us on the app is kind of lame. Um, that is one of my gripes with the bike. I wish it was a lot easier just to do navigation. I might as well just buy a phone mount for the bars here and just put my cell phone there and use Google Maps or something, which kind of defeats the purpose of that big screen. I'll work on that some more. Maybe there's something I'm not figured out with it yet, but I'll keep playing with it and see what I can get done with it. Um, walking around the bike, the other thing I want to touch on with its sporty nature is it does have a quick shifter up and down. So if you like banging through those gears like you're on a sport bike, this is a great system. I've used some horrible systems over the years looking at you, Ducati, um, with the quick shifter, but this one's great. This one's smooth, works great. Clutch pull on this one is hydraulic and it, it is nice and smooth, love that. Uh, the brakes on this bike are really good. Uh, no quarrels with the brakes, dual discs in the front, single in the rear. Uh, the ABS system, I did test it, works great. No questions there. Um, center stand, uh, I don't know if I touched on it yet, but the kickstand position's horrible. Uh, they could have done a better job putting that in a much easier to reach place, but what can you do? No bike is going to be perfect. Um, the windscreen does go up and down. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I like that. That's something new that's Indians had that for a while, um, too, but, uh, yeah, it works really well. So you can kind of just find your your perfect point depending on the day or what helmet you're wearing or maybe you've got a passenger that day. You can just find the perfect point where the wind isn't, isn't going to buff it. And uh, I found that works really well. No quarrels about that. One thing to mention about this bike too, it does have reverse. I know, right? Crazy? Reverse on a, on a bike? Well, don't hate it until you try it. I think it's pretty cool when you're in the driveway and, you know, you're trying to back up a big heavy bike. Um, I didn't have any quarrels with it. I like it. It works. You just have to learn how to use it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, something different, right? You also got your controls up here on the left for those, uh, fog light, driving lights, whatever you want to call them. And your main menu buttons over here as well. I did swap out the levers to some shorties. That's just something I do on almost every bike I own. And these ASVs feel great on the bike. Install was pretty easy. Uh, just gotta be careful adjusting that clutch because, um, it can be a little bit of a pain to get it just right, but um, we got it right, you know, thanks to my people at Eurocycle. And um, I also give them a little shout out too as well. If you don't know who Eurocycle is, they're uh, out here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and they sell Euro bikes, and they are my BMW dealer. And uh, Joe and, and Dave over there have always treated me really good over the years. Um, and they've always, anytime I had a situation, they've always made it right. So, um, which hasn't happened, but one time, but, uh, the important thing is you always judge a business based upon how they handle things when a problem comes up, not when everything's perfect. So I'm um, happy to keep doing business with those guys and, uh, Johnny, their mechanic there in the back. Um, he's really super knowledgeable on anything BMW. So small little plug for them. Um, 
you know, this paint scheme that's on this bike is beautiful. It's nice and sparkly. I'm a big fan of space myself. So it kind of called out to me. And plus it was fully loaded. I thought it was cool with something different that not everybody has on their bike. And uh, I think it's cool. So one less thing I have to worry about with this bike on changing or upgrading the paint. It's got some winglets here. These work, I tested these out today. You know, it uh, provided some more airflow, I guess you could say over to my region over here, my leg and stuff like that. Worked fine. Um, I mean, and the other thing to mention, I don't care, you know, when anybody else says, this to me is a beautiful bike. It's got sleek lines. Um, Everything's where it is. The only thing I really don't like about the style of the bike is this big giant exhaust. But what manufacturer do we like that, <laughs> that comes from the factory with something decent besides maybe another BMW with an Acura system? So one day when I can afford it all, I'll definitely be swapping this out to the Acura system and get some weight savings off of that. I'm not particularly gonna go for the sound on it. I want the weight savings to kind of take some weight off the rear of the bike um, to maybe bring a little bit more aggressive angle. Um, speaking of that, um, I will talk about the suspension system. It is dynamic ESA, which is BMW's electronic suspension. I've had good luck with it. It works good. You know, today on the roads, what I was really shocked about is I don't feel the bumps in the road as much as I did on any other motorcycle. Uh, I'm guessing it can probably sense that it's a little bumpy out and that it kind of, uh, you know, basically will um, adapt to that. So I kept it in road mode most of the day today worked great. I was really surprised at how much the suspension soaked up, but yet was firm when I wanted it to be firm, like in the corners or something like that. So I'm guessing there's some cool technology at work there. I'll have to do a little bit more research on that, but uh, yeah, worked great. No, com no complaints with that so far. And as I'm sitting here, there goes another K16 GT. Um, I'm about to head home and ride my final 80 miles home. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to tell you about the one thing on this bike that is a, a flaw with the bike and it may not affect you because I've been told it doesn't affect everybody um, but it has affected me a little bit and I changed the tires on the bike already to kind of maybe alleviate that and it did take care of about 70 percent of the problem but when you're on the highway and it's heavier traffic I'll say like maybe semis and cars and stuff like that the bike has an oscillation and the only thing I can narrow it down to is it's got to be something aerodynamic and when I'm out on these, on these back roads here in nice clean air, no problems. The bike stays right down the highways, tracks great, and it's buttery smooth. This engine, love it. It's buttery smooth, plenty of power. Um, if I put a Brent tune on that, I'm a little scared to think what it's gonna do, but we might do that when it's out of the warranty period later on. But so far, tons of power, love the engine. Um, but anyways, back to the, the problem at hand here, the oscillation. Um, if I were to describe it, imagine being on the highway and the bike just kind of just drifts. Even though the bike's perfectly straight up and level still, you haven't moved the bars, it's not windy out, nothing you've done. The bike just kind of skates like it's on ice or like wax paper. Um, and there's a couple videos out there showing it and it, it, it legit is a scary feeling. So I swapped out the tires to some Michelin Road 6 GTs. Um, because the most important thing to me on any motorcycle is a quality tire. And I don't run anything besides quality tires on all my bikes. And I like the extra grip, even if it doesn't get as much miles, I'd rather have the grip, but that's just me. But these Road 6 GTs so far, I think they're great. They're nice and sticky, uh, but that only took about 70% of the problem away for me. So I noticed today, if I'm on the highway and there's, uh, let's just call it dirty air. If there's dirty air, the bike can get a little, oscillate like that. We're just kind of like fishtails, it feels like. Um, I mentioned it to BMW in my review to them. It's been about three weeks. I haven't heard a single thing out of them, which is really upsetting to me. There is NHTSA complaints about this. Um, but the important thing to know is out of all the owners I talked to, about half of them were like, yeah, I mean, I felt that before and I swapped the tires and it went away. Uh, another quarter of them were like, yeah, I still have the issue. And then another quarter of them were like, yeah, I've never had the issue before in my life. So maybe it could be a weight thing with my, you know, 290 pound self. Maybe it messes with the geometry of the bike or something, I don't know. I would really love an answer out of BMW on why the bike does that and maybe a possible fix, but I'm not holding my breath guys on that one. But like I said, it may affect you, may not affect you at all. Cause you know, who knows? Um, there's a lot of feedback that says, you know, they haven't had the issue. The NHTSA uh, said that they, 
you know, tried to go out and duplicate the issue and it didn't work, but I think they used a GT model and not a B model, which by the way, the GT models are not having that complaint. Um, I'm gonna try and get my hands on a GT model to ride one and see for myself, but no promises. Um, but other than that oscillation issue I've described and maybe the kickstand being a little in a weird spot and the app not working full yet, but that could just be me. Uh, no other quarrels with the bike. No other major issues to talk about. Um, other than that, I love it. Uh, I, I hope I get a bunch more miles. I'm about to go do 80 miles on the way home. and It's a beautiful day out. So I figured I'd stop and document this for you guys and happy to answer any questions or talk about it. And uh, maybe let me know if you own a K16B, you know, what your experience has been. Uh, but the dealer did look over the bike the other day and said, nope, bike's perfect when they did the tires. And, uh, well, I guess we'll see what happens in the next couple of months. I'll, bike's not going anywhere as of now. I'm going to keep hanging on to it. But uh, if, uh, if I have any other changes or maybe another fix that works, then I'll be happy to report back. But uh, I'm going to go enjoy these last 80 miles on the way home and kick my feet up on the field boards a little bit, listen to some music, and uh, enjoy this beautiful day we're having, about 65 degrees out here. So... Hope you guys are having a good one where you're at. And if you got any questions or comments or you own one of these bikes, feel free to drop it in the comments. I'll be happy to hear from you. See you later.